Hello, bienvenue, bonsoir. Um, je m'appelle Justine Smith, je suis une programmatrice avec le festival Fantasia. Je suis enchantée ce soir de présenter la première mondiale de Slacks. Ça, c'est le Q&A uh, pour le meilleur film de jeans meurtrier de l'histoire du cinéma. This is a movie that proves with bloody realness that there is no ethical consumption of capital of consumption under capitalism. I am so excited to invite the cast and crew of the film. Um, ce Q&A va être en, uh, bilingue. Alors, si vous avez des questions en français, n'hésitez pas à nous demander. Il y a un bouton en bas pour de, des questions. J'ai déjà trois, alors tout le monde est très enthousiaste. Um, alors, je vais commencer par présenter uh, la réalisatrice. Uh, je ne sais pas, Elsa... Uh, Camp Heart. Nous avons aussi uh, plusieurs de nos acteurs du film. Erica Anderson, Sahar Bojani, Roman Denis, Kenny Wong, Brett Donahue, and oh, we have also uh, Jean-Mathieu Beroubé, the one of the Blood Brothers, uh, who provided many of the bloodiest moments of the movie. So I'd like to like, welcome everyone. I'm so excited. Oh, we also have Anne-Marie Gélina with Brett. Um, the wonderful producer. So thank you, thank you, thank you for showing up. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. I would love to know where where does Slacks come from? The idea, it's so unique, it's so original. Um, Elsa, could you kind of go into the inception of this idea? Sure. Well, I also wanted to introduce Patricia gomez Latar, co-director and uh, other producer of Slacks. So, um, you're probably going to be super surprised to hear that Slacks came up as a joke on a really long road trip. <laughs> um, Patricia and I and our, uh, the producer of our first feature, Graveyard Alive, were on a road trip um, to New Orleans together. And we were just mercilessly teasing each other with words that we hated. So I hate the word panties. So of course, Andrea, being one of my oldest friends, was like, panties, panties, panties. <laughs> and then she said, her most hated word is slacks. So of course, I was like, slacks, 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 for like eight hours. And then it just, to Patricia and I's twisted mind, it just sounded like a killer pair of pants. So honestly, that's how Slack started. There was no idea of like um, a social message behind it. It was just pure childish silliness and then after almost 20 years of this idea sort of brewing in her head it was a good 15 years and some really bad drafts um, I became more and more concerned with the state of um, of the world so of uh, totalitarian uh, consumerism and corporations uh, and I saw a documentary about fast fashion called The True Cost, which I really recommend. And everything just gelled together. I was like, oh my God, Slacks is obviously about um, the destruction that um, globalization and consumerism is costing everyone. So uh, from the production, the exploitation of uh, people working to the resources that the the corporations are extracting all the way to the consumers who are being brainwashed to buy products they don't need for especially women being, being made to think that they're always um, completely inadequate. Uh, so yeah, so it started with me being a really bitchy friend to Andrea, who I hope is watching, and then it turned into this. And, and oh, I have to say, Patricia worked at The Gap for a few years, and so she had the genius idea. At first, it didn't take place in a store but she was like oh my god it obviously needs to take place in the store and she infused all her gap knowledge into the draft and especially the character of Craig came from a few compendium of her most loved managers and obviously she's the character of Shruti who doesn't give a shit <laughs> so um, yes I mean, that's amazing and I just the first thing I thought of was actually the gap because in the 90s it was super popular for like activist teens to post stickers all over the gap that were like stop the sweatshops and that was like the first echo of like before i even know where the movie was going that came mm. to it. so like mm -hmm. yeah. it really it feels gapish without being too gap absolutely i mean the logo we did a lot of research on different logos and different corporations and the gap was definitely uh, an inspiration for the for the square logo I would love to know about working um, in the location. There must have been finding the right place that we could be this kind of store and also the challenges and advantages 
of working in one location. Um, I think this kind of opens up to also the actors and the special effects because you're working with so many different elements in what I assume may be a more limited space than the screen kind of lets on. Well, it was actually three locations. Uh, there was the storefront was in a, in a mall in a uh, closed store. So the store was completely vacant. We just rebuilt it from nothing. Then all the corridors, all the corporate offices that was in uh, Place Longueuil. So we had to shoot overnight, which was really brutal. We had a whole week of nights there. And then the warehouse was in a real functioning warehouse in the east end of Montreal and again we had to shoot overnight because it was a functioning warehouse so I think um, the art director and the the cinematographer um, did a great job with making it feel like a cohesive place because you're the second person who, who thinks it was shot in one place and Patricia at first when I was like I want this big warehouse she's like that doesn't exist in malls they don't have these huge warehouses it's like I don't care this is this is a horror movie so that's why we actually had to piece together these locations because what I had in mind didn't didn't exist I mean that's incredible because yeah it feels so seamless it feels like any kind of retail store that I've worked in but like on a on a much grander level um, I'm going to just jump into the Q&A because we already have seven questions so that's super exciting people have lots lots to know that they want to know about the movie um, so from Calder Levine, I have, what was the most challenging part to film? Uh, I would have to say the slacks puppeteer. That was really, really challenging because none of us had ever made uh, jeans come to life. <laughs> so we were figuring it out as we were going. I mean, Marie-Claude, where is she? Is she here? So we have actually slacks herself um slacks is a, a puppet uh, created by the wonderful blood brothers and, pup and oh so oh, i'm like pointing because she's here in the room but and puppeteered by an amazing uh puppeteer um that we have right here so we, she, we i was like we have to figure out the the jeans emotions and she, so she did an amazing job with she would show me things and i was like yeah like that it's it's sort of sad but just having to figure out like act, acting out the genes with someone in green screen behind us, as you saw at the end, we, we see how it was done. It was super challenging because the slacks had to have a personality and Marie-Claude did a great job, but just like, whoa, and try to figure out all the ways like the Blood Brothers and I did a lot of tests where they, they had to figure out how it walked, how it crawled. It was all sorts of different mechanisms. So that was just like <laughs> totally nuts. And like the mannequin, that was a huge thing. We're like, how are we going to have a mannequin in jeans? Like all of it was insane. But I'll open up the floor to the others who had to actually manipulate the pants. Marie-Claude, would you parler un peu? Oh, tu peux pas. Oh, the uh, jib. Jib, can you talk? You're muted. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, everybody. It was great, great to see the movie. It's awesome, Elsa. The editing is very great. But yeah, it was quite a quite a big challenge to make those jeans move. Me and Carlo, he's there too. The other blood brothers. And um, we had to build over 53 pairs of jeans to um, to build a rig for pretty much every scene. Every scene that's happening is a different rig. And uh, Marie-Claude uh, puppeted them uh, for most of part. And then we jump all in for the for the pants I mean, So it was a uh, it was yeah quite a challenge when you get a call from Elsa saying it would be very nice to have a pair of living jeans that kills people and strangles Erica and. Uh, cut the ends of Kenny and all of that. Carlo, you can talk to you. You just need to unmute your microphone. If you want to say something, I see you waving all around. So uh, thanks for giving us that chance. It was a very big challenge, but it was very good to see the movie and to feel the genes that they're real. They're not CGI and you don't feel like you're watching a video game. You feel like you're watching a, a pair of genes killing people. Thank you, Anne-Marie. Thank you, Elsa. It was Great. Yeah, th thank you, girls. It, it, it was a, an awesome experience to do this movie. It was just like so fun. Uh, again, I just saw the edit and everything for the first time. I'm like kind of flabbergasted here. I'm like all ah, excited and everything. But I just want to bring up that moment of when, you know, when when Slacks came to life. You like, yeah, Marie Claude, you remember this? And Jib, you remember this? Yeah. That night when we were in the shop. 
we had been working like 60, 70 hours that week. And that one moment where we filmed Slacks moving in the shop and she jumped up onto the, onto the tool rack and everything. And we just went completely insane and like Elsa, Elsa, like text Elsa, text Elsa. It's there, like, there, it's like, there, it is. there she there is. is, there it's she alive. is. She just came alive. Yeah, after, after uh, 10 plus rigs of like, ah, so, so it's something, but it's not credible yet. And uh, that day we built the final, which the one that became the final rig, Marie Claude started walking and dancing around and it was like, there it is. This is it was, She was there. It was one of the best, best souvenirs pretty much of our career so far. Good job, MC. Thank you. Uh, so I have a question for the actors. Uh, this is from Alicia. Um, to the actors, especially the ones who had to be assholes, were you inspired from real life assholes for your role? Um, I'm also going to throw in, there's another question about working in retail. And so I think that even if you didn't play someone who was particularly awful, were you inspired by people or your own experience in the retail industry? Um, oh, Brett. Who, who had to be an asshole? I'm, I'm not, I'm not yeah, sure. Let's go in. <laughs> uh, yeah, I actually worked at The Roots. And as oh. I got there, at Roots, The Roots, not the band, Roots. Uh, and as I got there, they gave me this booklet that was filled with all of these psychological strategies of how to identify the customer, identify their character traits, and approach them uh, as needed. And uh, I remember being really kind of just so surprised that that kind of thinking and work and effort <laughs> and study had gone into selling hoodies with a beaver on them. Um, so that, yeah, I, 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 I drew on that a lot. I think it was, I just want to say like, it was just funny watching it with like my family who's like, wow, like, I can totally see like you in that and just like taking comfort in moments and like, Oh, like sometimes I am an asshole, I guess. <laughs> like, <laughs> like really coming to terms with that fact. Like, um, yeah. So like personal experience. Like, <laughs> um, I've never worked in retail, but I felt like Libby was the one character who's not trying to sell. She's there to do good in the world. And, and unfortunately, she chooses this company who's lying to its customers. But I thought that it was easier for me um, to do those scenes in the store because I wasn't this creepy um, salesperson who's trying to guess who you are so they can sell better to you. You know, you know, it was very, so it was easier for me, of course, but, um, yeah, she's very naive. <laughs> for me, I struggled folding clothes. So that was, uh, <laughs> never worked in retail. So I really had to like practice, you know, and, uh, I learned some things about hanging clothes. I won't get much into that, but, <laughs> but yeah. But, but also, also to the question, it's so, it's just to who asked the question, it's so fun because you kind of can draw upon your life of going like, oh, that person was a real asshole there, or this person's not all over here. And if you're not that type of person, just uh, in your daily life, you can kind of like, you get to store all these things up and luckily come across a character where it's all there and then just, Kind of also, it in. also, Kenny, like we all learned how to fold on that side. Like oh, God. <laughs> we were all like, oh, and this, and this. And, yeah. yeah, it's a very specific way of folding that no. I never used again. Never. You yeah. know, for um, my character, sometimes I thought she wasn't mean enough. I wanted her to be meaner, you know, to stand her ground and be like, no, you know, this isn't working for me. This is weird this is really weird and not just be like, okay, I guess we're just going to hide this dead body. So <laughs> sometimes I wanted her to like put her foot down and just be like, what? No. But of course it wasn't the character and it represented naivete. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, sometimes I, I did want her to be meaner because I thought if I were in this situation, Oh, this would not fly. But you know, 
I definitely uh, drew from an experience at my workplace. Actually, we had a we had a like cocktail launch. I usually actually work in the restaurant industry, and uh, it was with all these influencers that came in. And the whole night, it was people staring at their phones, or they'd pose and they'd really smile, and then two seconds later, they're like totally looking miserable on their phone. And it was that the whole night you'd be like, uh, can I help you with something? And they'd be like, oh, yeah. And then like back to this. So that was kind of where I drew from that. But then also just the Internet in general. <laughs> I mean, that kind of uh, leads into the question I have about uh, Elza. You're kind of talking about the evolution of the story of how Slacks came to be. And one of the things I found the coolest was this integration of this YouTube culture around it. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how that entered um, the story and how you went about to create YouTube videos that are very YouTube-esque if like that's a very big compliment because it's not always very easy to do. Thanks well actually I'd never heard of the influencer before I saw the documentary called uh, the the true cost and this isn't a plug for the documentary it's just it was very influential and that's where I first saw the un boxing videos and I was like are you effing kidding me whoa this is so worse than I ever imagined um, that the world is creating these sort of super self-obsessed sort of pseudo selling themselves but clothes but not really like ugh, it was I was so disgusted that I knew I had to create a character in slacks um, like that and then I just did tons of research I just trolled the internet for tons of these um, influencer videos and I was just inspired by everything I saw. I did a lot of research to look at the, to find out the look of it. Um, and then we just, I just wrote these videos and uh, Erica was perfect for the part. I still remember where she was. Good job, Erica. Her, her, uh, her soft tape, Patricia and I were like, oh my God, she's like a space alien. She's amazing. And, uh, and then in post, we worked really hard with, I did a lot of research again with the, both the editor and the graphics person uh, who was great um, to create the look. We did a lot of little tests of, of the images. Um, he had a lot of propositions. So it was, everything was really carefully researched and, uh, and we did quite a few trials like to come up with her logo was a lot of, uh, a lot of trial and error because we wanted it to feel heightened but also feel something the familiarity with the uh, with the influencers and uh, one other thing i went to la to visit some friends a few years ago before we shot slacks and i my friend one of my friends works in a, oh, who actually did a lot of the graphics uh worked for a blog and he took me to a couple of parties and i saw the influencers like taking photos and i was just like oh my god i'm in slacks ah this is so grotesque like ugh. it's like the the snake eating its own tongue so i knew i i just knew it hit on something that was so weird and disturbing um but that obviously i had to put into the film and uh, another question from calder is uh what was the most challenging part to film Okay, um, one of the most challenging uh, things was all the um, stunts because I'd never done the stunt work before. So we had this stunt coordinator, uh, which was later called death consultant, uh, I hear. Uh, so, but he, um, Brett, Sahar and myself, we went and trained with him, you know, because they're, they're sort of like choreographies that you learn because for example, when Brett is choking me. He can't actually choke me. Um, so of course we had to, you know, but it's very technical. It's very, you know, where the arm is placed and, you know, and, sorry, but the boobs got in the way. And so it was very, very, you know, we had to make sure that and everyone was comfortable and that we didn't make any, you know, wrong movements that could end up being potentially dangerous. You know, when Sahar gets stabbed, it's very, but the movements are very realistic, but in order for that to happen, there's a lot of practice in the, the technical movements that you have to learn. Um, so yeah, that, and I would say for myself, the other challenging part was at the end where I'm begging Kirat not to kill people. Um, I was actually talking to a Pole 
Um, so, <laughs> so it was a very emotional scene and it, it was very, you know, you have to cry and be very, you know, but I was talking to this pole. So, um, we became very close, uh, but <laughs> so it was, sometimes it was very challenging, but that's what happens when you work on a movie where, you know, you don't have everything on set. There's a lot. So to have the actual genes with us that were moving, that were very creepy even when you see the person who's moving it it's still very creepy so that helped a lot i would say That's it. i would say kenny <laughs> you should talk about your like three-day death scene <laughs> oh yeah that was that was easy what are you talking about um <laughs> no it was uh it was uh it was a crazy amount of uh blood and, um, you know, it was just like, you're taking a shower. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> it, was, it was just gallons and gallons of blood. And I think it was trying to stay mentally focused throughout the whole thing. Because, you know, there's so many people, so many crew members who are working, you know, just as hard. And you don't want to, you, you want to make sure that you're you're so in it and, you know, not, not complain about anything. You know, you just want to stay in it the whole time. So. I think, um, you know, working with the rig was, you know, it was heavy and I'm complaining now, not really. Um, but it, yeah, it, it, it was a challenge. Uh, it wasn't easy for sure. Um, but I had such a good time after everything was, I was like, that was the best experience I ever had. And it was great, you know? I want to I want to step in here because I, I don't think I don't think Kenny is doing himself justice. I think he screamed in this echoey, dusty, uh, huge, huge warehouse for like seven hours straight, covered in blood. They'd have to shower him down to restart. We only had a limited amount of blood, and then after you shoot a movie, there's something called a reshoot period where if anything screws up or you have to do something again, you go and you shoot it again. And sure enough, Kenny's death scene was one of the reshoot periods. So he had to do it all again. And I swear to God, I remember coming in on that day to do something else. And Kenny was just white in the face, but covered in blood. Like it looked like it looked like he himself was living a horror movie. <laughs> but I have to say, every time there's blood, because it, it was my it was my first death scene. Um, so but every time there's blood, it's very not very comp it is complicated but you only have so many shots at doing it so for my death scene for example we we didn't really have time to shower me down every time so we had one shot and it didn't work and so i went to the gym there, there was a gym uh next door so i went to the gym took a shower explained the whole thing to the guy who thought it was hilarious um took a shower came back had lunch and then we reshot it after and it's very sticky and it's very it's very complicated to work with so um yeah you have to be fair you can't be anywhere else in your head you have to be there because it's yes yeah. yeah you don't have a lot of shots I, I love going to lunch just like blood all over the face and everyone's like because <laughs> they forget what we were shooting <laughs> just see a guy with no it was so much fun I actually have a, t a question about the blood in general, and it's something I've always wanted to know about horror movies. Um, you kind of talked a little bit about, about it, the cleanup, but if you're working overnight in warehouses and there is so much blood in this movie, how does that work? Like how much, <laughs> is it easy to clean? And how long does it take? I'm so fascinated. We just left it there. We left it all there. It was... Oh yeah, I, I was actually amazed because they had a whole process of cleaning up with a vacuum and a mop and everything. And it would take maybe like, I don't know, maybe 10, 10, 15 minutes in between the takes and stuff, but it would be all gone before the next take. And I was always like, I would just stare at the people cleaning at it. Cause I'm yeah, like, like sh and how shout do you out do to this? them. Like, it was crazy. Oh, yeah. It was like, and we were a whisked away to be, we're like, oh my God. I was like, oh my God, blood, blood. And everyone's like cleaning. They're like, hey, we have to like hurry up. So I was like, shout out, honestly, like hands down. It, it was yeah. incredible. It was fast and it was like, we're like, okay, we're ready again. Like it was incredible. These people like worked so hard. I have, to, I have to say, you were talking about um, the challenging scenes. The whole stampede 
at the end was very challenging because it was a lot of I'm not a stunt person. I have no experience. So I had to learn in a very small amount of time because some t I had a stunt double who was amazing. Uh, so in certain shots, when you see me from behind, it's actually her. Um, so she has all the training, but I don't. However, for certain shots, we had to see my face. So when I fall down on the floor and I hit my head, um, we had to see my face. It couldn't be my stunt double. So I had to learn how to hit the floor without really hitting the floor uh which was really hard on my neck but it it's all these sh shots of it's very quick when you see it on the screen it's a scene that doesn't really last very long but the whole process of building that scene and doing shot by shot with everyone screaming and the blood and the you know and the, and the me dying and my eyes kept you know closing and stuff you know and we had to there was this shot of my eye and i had to keep my eye open but it was so dry and it was so sometimes it's the tiny oh. little things you know the a dry eye but it can ruin a shot so yeah that particular piece of the movie was quite challenging to to do yeah that i think that was the hardest part is keeping the eyes open for the for the close-ups those are really hard because I keep blanking. Yeah, I couldn't uh, do it. I remember trying to be dead on the ground with my eyes open as the thing. pants like slowly slithered and it was like, <laughs> like just couldn't happen. And also like for the technical elements, like it was, it was wild. Like you see it on screen and it looks so seamless, but I remember getting hung and like, I'm like flanked by the blood brothers. <laughs> And we had to do it so many times and you have to do like to make it work with the pants and everything. I'd have to do that whole like whole monologue in one go with the pants slowly coming up. And then it was trying to get that twist. So it actually looked like it's like twisting and pulling. And I can't even remember how many times we did it, but it was really fun to work on. But it's like all those little technical pieces, like as Roman was saying, like everything needs to be there. One little piece is out and it doesn't work. Well, I would say that every time, every day we're like, okay, so this is going to be a really challenging day, right? Okay, we're looking at the call sheet and we're like, wait a minute, at the end, every day was a really challenging day. Even the scene in the office where they're talking to Kirat on the screen um, and they have to interact with the screen and it was like 10 pages long of dialogue in this minuscule office. So even an office scene... <laughs> It's super challenging. I think everything, I don't think there was a day, Patricia, that was not challenging, but I think that's where it works because it's so condensed and so like insane. And even like the, the writing, the Hindi writing on the wall with the blood. Oh my God. It seems so easy. Oh, yes. Yes. Jib did. Uh, he manipulated the hand with the blood and like it, just that was like, weeks of research and trying to figure out how to shoot it when to shoot it how with how to write Hindi. how to write Hindi, like yeah so shout out to everyone who who just made this insane movie happen in such a short amount of time it like it, it could have taken twice as long to get it but uh everyone just worked like their pants off <laughs> i'd like to add one little note on that on peyton's death that was probably like for us, one it was probably the most challenging kill of that whole film. It's you know me and Jim are big guys. Everybody that's worked on set with us, you know, you know we're not small. And doing that little twist and the flip around on the neck and getting it to go up your neck and everything, you know, we actually practiced that like for a complete day with Marie Claude looking at us, making sure that you know we're reflecting Slax's attitude at the same time and everything. It was a lot of practice. We probably did that shot, like that move, maybe, I don't know, 100, 150 times until we got it right. And then we did like the 10 or 15 times with you to get it right on scene. And yes. it was uh, it was really special to do. Just, just, for, I, just for the audience to, to understand, I mean, the jeans are all puppeteers and manipulated. But as a puppeteer, when you wear green screen, you cannot walk in front of the actor. So in that scene, we had to exchange pole and manipulating wires so the gene could twist around her and twist around her neck. So there was a few very tricky moves that there's a puppeteer every side of her and one under and we're passing, we're passing the genes to each other to make it move. So 
It was a great debt there, Rika. Can I just say, uh, I guess, you know, um, you guys made it so easy for us. So I just want to give a huge props to, to the both of you and Bruno, uh, cause you know, it could have been, it could have been hell and, but it wasn't, it was, it was you guys made it a lot of fun. So thank you. Thank you, Kenny. It was a pleasure working with you too. Hope we kill you again soon. <laughs> um, so we're going to have to start uh, winding down. I'm going to take two more questions. Um, so if you have a really great question, now's the time to send it in. Um, and I apologize to anyone who I can't get to. We have so much enthusiasm. And um, if I'm skipping you, it doesn't mean it's bad a question. We just have so many. Um, I would love to know about uh, creating the personality for Slacks. I think that when we talk about puppeteering and why you choose something like a practical effect for that, it's because it has this persona. And obviously, as the film goes on, we kind of learn more about who this killer pair of pants is. Um, and they do have a personality. Can we? Can you guys discuss a little bit how that was created and how that, with a voiceless character, fundamentally we created who this pair of pants is? Sure. I mean, to me, it was always obvious it was Kirat, the, the young girl who just wanted revenge. Um, but I think the most challenging part, and Marie-Claude maybe can jump in, I don't know where she is, uh, was to have um, the relationship with Libby because there is a moment where they connect and that had to be conveyed through through Slax's movement. So that was the trickiest part, I would say, is to create that very tenuous connection between this inanimate, faceless object and um, and and a real living person, but maybe Marie Claude en parler un peu. Yeah, it was um, quite a challenge. I think we needed to first uh, discover the different stages of Slack. Actually, like at first, she obviously just is a pair of jeans, and then slowly becoming something. So it was a matter of dosing every stage and how it moved, and then when it's fully standing up, it's quite like more a menace but then I think it really got more of a personality when we got to see its face too so that was fun and with the when it really got into a mean face and then we could see the eye leaking and stuff so yeah we really like wanted it to slowly reveal itself and I think it was great that it was a, a woman puppeteering slacks because I feel like it made a difference. I really do. And I know that it was Elsa's decision. She really wanted a woman to play Kirat. And it was really important to her. And I, I really respected that because it, it did make a difference in the end, I think. Yeah, sometimes it. Yeah, really for sure. Of course. I mean, women and men move differently and think differently and feel differently. I mean, we're equal, obviously, but there, I think there is a difference between men and uh, how men and women move. Okay, I'm probably going to get tons of messages being like, no, rah. okay. I, I just have to add to that, that Slack's face is actually uh, manipulated by two or three people at the time. So yeah, Marie-Claude, you, you brought all your, your, your great energy in there and uh, showed us how to, uh, to, uh, to help you make the rest of the face move and all that. So Slack's became a life. Yeah, I mean, it was important to have to have the same sort of feeling of an entity of of the pants of the young girl. They never met, though. No, you never oh. met Kirat. No, who was amazing. She was a, a non actor, uh, a young a young woman who's a dancer, but uh, who was who was found by the the Bollywood choreographer who actually choreographed the dance that Slacks does. Um, so we were super lucky to find her. She was really, she was really great. Yeah, the dance that was so fun to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so one last question, it will be, is there any plans for a sequel? Um, or have you imagined the genes in a larger environment, like a crowded mall, and what might happen? No, there's no plans for a sequel, although Patricia and I are working on another short film that features a, an inanimate object. Um, but no, because to me, it's really this sort of self-enclosed world where you never see... Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> you never see that with horrible acting. <laughs> That's why we're behind the camera. Behind in front. <laughs> but I never wanted to to show the exterior of the store. Uh, because to me, it was really important that it be this sort of self-enclosed world. Um, and so, no, I never imagined that we could actually see slacks outside of the store. But I love uh, working with inanimate objects. I mean, uh, I'd like to thank everybody for participating. I thought this was absolutely lovely. And I'm so moved by the response of the audience. Um, so many amazing questions and comments. Um, if people would like to continue to the discussion, they are welcome to move to Discord, or you can talk online, or you could talk to your friends. Um, if you love Slacks, tell people. Um, I believe the film was recently picked up by Shudder in Canada, and so hopefully way more people will be able to see it soon. Uh, I'd like to thank once again our amazing panelists who joined us during the pandemic to discuss their love of cinema and pants. Um, thank you once again. Bon cinema. Enjoy the rest of the festival, everyone. Wait, wait, wait. I just, oh, oh, wait, one I more comment. Wanted, Let's go. I just wanted to say that the film is coming out on screen on uh, Friday, September 11. In Quebec. Uh, all across Canada. Oh, across Canada. Oh, great. All across Canada. And Shutter is for the US, and that's going to be in 2021. So, we're... okay, that's even better. That's uh, like yeah. full theater experience. September yeah. 11th, people. Go yeah. To the cinema. And it's coming out in other festivals across the world. So, if you are not in Canada and you couldn't see it tonight, then please go see it at your, in your, the festival near you. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for Bye, coming everyone. and enjoying Bye. Slacks.